Hey glam lovers, welcome back to the Glamour Circus. I'm the Baroness Lovey Deluxe and today I am going to do a video on vintage jewelry. So today I'm going to show you my own little collection, but I'm also going to tell you where I purchased, what I look for, and as well some care and cleaning tips that will really help you get you on your way wearing this jewelry as well as enjoying just kind of the look of it with modern day as well as vintage attire. So let's get started. Today I've got some brooches in front of you. I've actually got a couple trays here. And I have a small collection. Um, I make my own jewelry. I've been a jewelry designer since 2004 and I love to mix vintage with modern. And that's how I got into vintage jewelry. I was getting all these vintage pieces that I was breaking and making into new necklaces. And I was like, wait a minute, some of this could be valuable and it's super gorgeous. I just wanna wear it the way it is for myself and so I did get a book there is a couple books that you can get in this series as you can see I have notes everywhere because I have been researching and looking and so I mean I was literally getting like a box of vintage jewelry and I'm like I don't want to break this if it's worth something or very valuable so um, this book is called Inside the Jewelry Box. It's volume two. There is three volumes in this collection. And of course, there's several other books you could get. I find one of the best places to get them is Amazon because I can get them quickly while I'm researching. Jewelry. So of course, I'm not getting on the camera today. I wanted to show the jewels. Um, I predominantly love Wes bro brooches and earrings, but I do purchase other types. And I will link the names down below. I believe it's pronounced Saracudo or Kuro. I can, I know I'm saying that wrong. Um, there's some important tips about vintage jewelry in general to get us started. It wasn't uncommon for some of the brooches not to be stamped. And the reason why is back in the day, the 40s, 50s, however long ago we go, people did not realize that people 40, 50 years later would be collecting these vintage items. And these were literally pennies and dollars back in the day for these women. So here we are fast forward and some of us are paying up to thousands for these pieces. I did not do that for my collection. I kept my collection humble and modest. I was really about the jewels and creating little color sets and what would go with some outfits. So today though, let's look at the actual jewelry. And this set was purchased on eBay, one of my favorite places to purchase vintage jewelry. And I know a lot of people are skeptical, um, but I found it to be, you can, you know, your sellers, you can tell if they're verified or reputable. You can actually um, contact them. And one thing I love is that you can um, set bids and you can make an offer. And I like that. Some things aren't worth it, some are. And I'm not one to bid on things and wait. I like when I see something I want, I purchase it. So if I look to see that I can purchase right away, if I can send a bid just because I want to negotiate, then I have that option. And as you can see, this one is signed Wes. But the actual brooch, it was a set that came together, is not stamped. So if you're weary of jewelry being fake, do not hesitate because quite often these not quite often the brooches weren't stamped. And so it's kind of like up to your eye to figure out what is and what isn't. And that's where tools like this come into hand. Uh, inside the jewel box, this is how I identified a lot of my jewelry. There's three books in this. I have volume two. I can't remember why I have this particular volume, but these books are great. Purchased it on Amazon, and there is other great books that you can get to help you identify jewelry. So I may be a fool, but I just kind of went for it. And yes, these are Wes, never been worn, and I love buying vintage jewelry that is almost brand new. That's just me. That's just the way I like it. Now these are new. This I found on a beret that I purchased, and these are also from eBay which I thought would look really great on a sweater. So these definitely aren't vintage, these are new, but I thought they looked vintage and I love them and I wanted to add them to my collection. Now here is another Wes. 
and you can see the stamp on this one. And so you'll find them on the back of the brooches or that will be like this where there's nothing, but yet the earrings have it. So, and the earrings are usually on the front. So I love that one. And I like to buy my vintage jewelry with all the stones intact. So uh, it's very important to find pictures online. Um, I either have been really lucky, none of the stones have fallen out, but if they had, I'm not too worried because as a jewelry designer, because that was one of my businesses, I'm able to replace the stone or very close to it. But like I said, all of my pieces pretty much have their stones. This is a beautiful pink and red. Now, this one I used the book to identify, and this was a Wes. And this was my very first vintage piece. It was a Wes. Neither of them are stamped on the back. And that's what I was meaning by it wasn't uncommon, but it doesn't mean they aren't the designer. And then here are the matching earrings with the clip on. And you can see here I've added in cushions. I'm allergic to costume metal, so that helps me wear it. I also have very small earlobes and that will fill out the earrings so it stays on. So that is another really important tip for wearing vintage jewelry. You want that clip-on earring to stay on. And a lot of us were not raised to wear clip-on jewelry. So it's either uncomfortable or it just doesn't fit. And this one, I only needed the one. And then if I wanted to coat that just to protect my ear, you can use a clear nail polish or you can also use something like this. And this you spray on metals. You can paint it or spray it. I bought it in the spray form. I can do chains, um, back of the earrings, anything. And you would want to get something like this frog tape and just kind of maybe gently lay the stones on top. You don't want them popping out, but you don't want them getting dulled by the sprays or the chemicals. Because you do have to be careful. They are vintage. So this one was a new piece. And this one was an old one, but I wanted to make a little set to wear on a blouse. And then of course I have the vintage Wes earrings and they just looked really beautiful together. So I am big on mixing old with the new. Some of you may not be, but if you are, it's just great. It's just some, it adds some great variety to your wardrobe and how you can wear them and also how you can complete these sets. So I quite often would buy these new pieces and I would break the backs and add them to necklaces and I just didn't want to do that with my vintage pieces. I was just like, wow, this could be really valuable. So I decided to just keep them separate. There have been some of my necklace bibs where I have done vintage, but I'll maintain, I will not break off the pins. I will pin this on so people can use them and take them off. And that way you have some versatility. This is another Wes. I love this one. It's got kind of a Japanese kind of flavor to it. And of course, Predominantly, all the earrings are clip-on. These ones, I did a clear cover because I did not need this. It was a bit too much. It was too thick. So that's all I needed. So these are just some ideas on how you can make these earrings fit your ears. These sticky um, backs come with a round cover, and you can use one or both. And here I used, I also got clear covers because it was just easier. There we go. And these are just costume, but they have that, that look of art deco Victorian. And these were the, these beautiful ones came in their original box. They had a slight stain on the box. And once again, this one is not stamped, but it is a Wes and the earrings are stamped. So if you see a, a brooch you just love, it doesn't mean it's fake or not valuable. And that's where learning how to identify, you know, having, getting these books is really helpful. And learning to identify them, the costume pieces, I'm trying to find you a section that might be really helpful, um, really helps. And that's how I figured out what pieces were valuable that I already had and what wasn't. I mean, you can see they have all these great ads and everything. And they have all these websites you can look up to purchase and to learn about the jewelry. So it really pays to do your research. All right, 
And this is my more colorful palette. Oh my gosh, I love this one. So once again, I've mixed new with old, but this is a Kuro, K-A-R-U. I'll put the full name down below. I believe it's Sakuro. And these was like another another style that I love. Their gemstones are always so soft and pretty. And I still have to go in and add the pads to that. And you may be just fine and you won't need any pads and your ears aren't sensitive and lucky you. This is another Wes. And then the earrings. These ones were not stamped, but I just love the colors on these. I thought they were just beautiful. And sometimes that's all it's about. These are another uh, Kuro, Sekiro. These are beautiful and you can see the stamp. And it's a K-A-R-U right on there. And then this was a new brooch, but I wanted it to match the earrings, you know, just for some variety and to make some little sets. This set I purchased off of eBay. You cannot offer bids, and that was the only downside of eBay. But the quality was good from the seller. As you can see, it has all its stones. I believe I got the earrings from eBay, this from Etsy, and I could not find the sets anywhere. And there you have a stamp. So I was able to purchase off Etsy and eBay and make a beautiful little set and kind of bring that collection together, which is really exciting. And once again, oh, this just popped off. These just slide on. And these are quite small, so I didn't need anything for these. These are strawberries. And these are Wes, again. There's one stone missing. Ooh. I did not notice that. So that's probably my only one with a stone missing. And I'll go in and probably put a green stone. And then right in here, I've got a stone missing. So not my ideal situation, but they were adorable. And you have to look carefully at the pictures and sometimes buying online, that happens. So be prepared, um, but I can fix that. So I'm not too worried. That will be a project that I'll do another video on. And here is the West brooch, which is in perfect condition. Lovely. The earrings are a quick fix, so don't get discouraged. You can tap in some stones. This is another beautiful one. Oh, is this Juliana? This may be a Juliana. Cannot, there's a stamp right there. I believe the full name was Juliana or Julie Moore. I will put the names down below as I find them. And once again, beautiful set in great condition. And I need to put some cushions on that. I have not worn this one. Once again, yes, it's a Julie, Julie something. I'll put it down there. It's in the book. I actually found all these designers in the book and they actually allowed me, pardon me, excuse me for that, to find a lot of these designs are in here. So it was really great to have this as a resource. So I'm looking to get the other two volumes because um, you will be amazed at what you come across when you vintage shop and you're looking for stuff and you, you know, you see these pieces and you're like, wait a minute, I have that. So I found it kind of exciting to look for this stuff and kind of hunt. This book is great. And I got this on Amazon. And like I said, there's two more volumes. Um, and these are collections from collectors, people who own these. Yes, that other set, the orange one, I believe, was Juliana. Here it is. Juliana. Right there. And I don't believe we have the exact. We may, but you can tell by the designs, the pointiness on the edges of the stone. See, they even have the back of the pieces. Yeah. It's, ex it's exciting. If you love vintage jewelry, you're going to love this. Oh, pardon me. Okay, now we've got everything straight again. Sorry, that was getting crazy. But um, there's a little write-up on each of the artists, which is also very interesting if you're very much into the jewelry. And I hope you enjoyed this little show and tell of my vintage jewelry and some ideas on how to take care of the jewelry from the cushions 
to the clear caps, the rubbing alcohol, clear nail polish, and of course, you can purchase these sprays, which are great. And this I went on a special site and got. You can also buy a can where you can paint, and that's great for if you're allergic or if you're worried about anything tarnishing. So this I'm going to be using on a silver tray, and I'll let you know how that goes. So subscribe to my channel if you want to see that video. Um, that will be coming up soon, and yeah. Okay. So like I said, you can get these sprays, and if you want to see more vintage reproductions or restoration, um, check out my video on restoring vintage compacts. I'll have that on the end here. And what I did to clean this up, add in powders, as well as doing makeup, adding in lipsticks. That is my lipstick I added in. And I added in a different powder to this one. And a little trick, statin compacts open up when you pull them back slightly. Okay, watch this video next. Thanks, guys.